How does the sun? How does the sun do it? That was the question, right? Here's the deal. If uh, you can stand, yeah. oh, you didn't get a copy, but then. <laughs> no, but I've heard about the sun okay. waves. And birthday the is the key. If we look at human nature as a circle of birthdays, you can argue you have a compass if those different days of the years have some meaning. And here's my effort to give the meaning to those days of the year. Birthday is too important. Can you turn down the room sound? Birthday is too important to leave to the archaic premises of astrology. So, when I say birthday, I'm not saying astrology. I'm saying that birthday is even more now important. Now they can't hear you. Can we turn it up a little bit? Uh, the idea was to make the recording good and uh, not worry oh, about I the see. reverb. Okay. I think you can hear me. You didn't need you didn't need the house on. We can hear you fine. He, he couldn't hear. Okay. Birthday is important because the sun is so important in our in our environment. And timing and order of experiences are so important in human development. So I'm saying the sun, timing, and order of experiences are, are crucial in human development. The argument here is that birthday provides us a compass to sort human natures analogous to the periodic table, the way it sorts the chemical elements a solar compass to help us get our bearings in the confusing human universe, the basis of a new psychology and a new approach to philosophy. Now here is a graph of uh, how solar energy varies per day throughout each year. And I have a graph in calories per square centimeter per day, starting out in April and then going up high in June, then back down in December over here. It turns out that if you keep track of how much energy we get from the sun to the earth as a regular feature of our environment, it's a beautifully simple curve. It's called a sine curve. It's very well studied throughout uh, the math and sciences of our civilization. And uh, as somebody who studied electrical engineering, I have a special uh, affection, affection for the sine curve. So here's the argument. The uh, range is from 150 calories per square centimeter at the low end to 800 at the high end. The reason I point out the numbers is if you have a low of about 200 and a high of 800, you're talking about a 400%, four times variation and this is with respect to the single most important thing in our environment, the sun. If you look in psychology, the Freud says uh, how the mother treated the baby is important. And Jung says how the culture treated. And Marx says uh, what class is important. But I'm saying the sun is the major player. If we can tune in on the sun, then we have gained a stroke in the struggle for human beings to overcome the tragic trend of human history. So, either the human nervous system has evolved to respond to these systematically different solar environmental patterns, or it has not. Now, let me just talk a little bit about the patterns, because I didn't draw that in here. You know, I skipped the page, actually. I forgot I double printed. The idea is this. If you have solar energy in the environment as this beautiful, simple sine wave that has a four to one ratio, then each individual's introductory lessons to life has a methodically different, a systematically different shape. If you start off at any part of the curve, that's a different first year compared with any other starting point. The importance of starting point is so important that in mathematics it's considered a dimension. Sine curves have three dimensions in mathematics, frequency, amplitude, and phase. Starting point is called phase, 
And starting point on this sine curve is your birthday. So birthday is the phase angle of this basic sine curve of energy that is the driving force for physical existence, for life as a system. Are you wanting oh. to understand something? Uh, Let me repeat your question, because you weren't at the microphone. The question arises, uh, isn't the time of conception more important or the important thing? Uh, you have another question? I wanted to actually answer this question. You cannot have a reality or even the perception of a reality without the sun. You will have complete, total, utter darkness without the sun. You will not even be able to visually see your neighbor, or you will not know what a chair is without the sun. Solar radiation and hydrogen in particular actually affects the environment, which also another term for glands can be chakras, pineal glands and, and, and whatnot, and all of these other glands in the body. So certainly the solar radiation is the major component. Hi there. Give you a microphone. Hi, John. Uh, but let, let me answer his, his question a different way. Uh, it's a good question. What I'm claiming is this, and there's more pages here. You can read it yourself. What I'm claiming is that we're talking about a system among human beings to create variety in the ways we make sense out of the universe. That each of us gets a different introductory lesson to life as a result of these different solar patterns. The solar patterns are part of a system that includes both gestation and birth. And I think it's particularly relevant to the movie we saw that when they were talking about the hypothalamus um, manufacturing different chemicals. In this paper, I mentioned that the hypothalamus is as close as physically possible to the light sensitive organ in our head. So you have a sensitivity, an influenceability of the sun's powers right there on the hypothalamus. And above the hypothalamus is another organ, the thalamus, from which the hypothalamus gets its name. <laughs> and the thalamus, again, is right there in the path of light that uh, reaches the pineal gland. So again, I'm trying to argue a new discovery, but let me get more into the physiology because I think, yeah, go ahead. I thought I answered it, but I'm going to, all right, let me repeat the question. Yeah, okay, let me try to elaborate so there won't be any question. You'll be so satisfied you understood. people when they have birth that want to try and, and replicate the child's experience in the womb so when they get born they throw them in a bucket of water. So I'm saying there is a reality in there so when that particular reality starts as opposed to the birth date. Also there are prematures and, and, and uh, late born. Okay, I got the question right. Uh, no, <laughs> see if you can listen to the answer. Hey, what, what? Here's what I'm arguing. I'm arguing that most animals have one time a year they're born, characteristic of their species. In order to do that, they also have a character, characteristic time of gestation. It's all one system to cause a particular part of that sine curve, a particular, particular shape to be their environment. Now, what makes human nature mysterious is my discovery, is that the human female has a separate egg for each of the 12, 13 parts of the year. It's like each third of the seasons is a different 
organism that starts out indeed with different features of the environment because the human female has a, a seasonal uh, quality to her chemistry. So indeed, the seasonality is part of the early environment, the gestation. But to give your point full credit, it turns out, I claim, that the mechanism, if you really want to point to where in your head is the birthday effect, let me spell it out quite clearly. It's the brainstem. The brainstem is a network, just as they were stressing, network, network. It is the most networky part of the human body. It is the hub um, of the network, because the neural nets were patterns. Well, you're right. The hub. Yeah. The the brainstem is a swelling of the network that goes along the spinal cord, and it is the network that interconnects all the signals with all the other elements of the nervous system. But in particular, this network turns on at birth in a large way. It is wakefulness that gets it going. And depending on where you are on this sine curve determines the different, we can say, parameters of interaction among all the elements of the network. Or to put it another way, we can call this part of your nervous system the brainstem with its flowering top, the hypothalamus and the thalamus. They're all one big, it's like a carrot. It's the top of the carrot is the hypothalamus and the thalamus. The thalamus is like the green flowers above the carrot. But, hold on there, is this going to help? That the, the thalamus, hypothalamus, brainstem, I'd like you to think of it as your central processing unit, like a computer has a CPU, the main chip. And depending on your birthday, that chip itself, the, I mean the central processing unit, the processing, your ways of processing information are that different. And as when you have people with different ways of processing information arguing against each other, it be, can become bewildering, defeating, um, discouraging, and that's why I'm calling it a compass, that we'll be able to see in advance the different ways people differ in their ways of processing information so that we can then make some progress in... Who, who's going to determine this, though? Let me throw something practical. I was just watching your show with Harold Channer. You two have different ways of processing. How would you and make a better show with Harold, for example? using your solar compass. That's kind of funny. Harold uh, is kind of a hopeless case. <laughs> no, no. He's, he's somewhere on that sine wave, too. Uh, no, I, and seriously, I mean, what you could do with the birthday is say, I don't want to be in his show. He's, uh, no. he's, he's too far gone. <laughs> no, no, no. Nonviolent communication. I watch that show carefully, just like I watch my uh, shows with Harold carefully. And if, if this can be worked out, there's hope for public access. Because he and you are public access. Your show every day at 930 is giving some of the most important political information. So our ability to develop skills in nonviolent communication, I think, are essential. Well, in terms of skills, let, let me paint for you all a picture. I mean, God put you here and Harold yeah, here and yeah, Emin yeah. here. <laughs> let me put it this way. Imagine on the Jerry Springer show, a hundred people of the same birthday somehow presented on stage and me there addressing the hundred of them saying, how many of you think that meh, 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 meh? and you know like 85 percent of them raise their hand then the audience goes wow maybe that guy's right maybe there is something the birthday as a people we can learn the characteristic ways of thinking the, the habits of thought the um, preferred um, forms of bigotry whatever it is we can nail those by seeing a whole bunch of people of the same birthday at the same time that this public hasn't gotten into, but that would be the revelation. And once we learn the characteristic patterns of thought from each one, that's the beginning of being able to cope with it. We can go further and say that once we discover ways to deal with people of that birthday, then we won't have to learn afresh each new character. We can say, oh, Harold, his birthday is 
March 14. What works with March 14? So let me look in the oh, excuse database. Me, just, just one second. Sir, you're leaving. You were talking about the Dalai Lama, and I just wanted, I, I, I don't want to, because I'm at the microphone, yeah, I can't right. run away. Yeah. No, my, no, my only comment I wanted to say is I was in India for four years, and I was in the Tibetan refugee camps. Right. And there's a, a religion not very well known, a Tibetan religion that the Dalai Lama is trying to suppress. That's the only reason I was oh, a little edgy right. about whenever you bring this, this, and this person, then you've got a whole history behind this, this, and this. Whereas if we can start to work with these models of just understanding that we, we all have these neural nets and, sure. and designing them, that's all that I meant. Oh, that's great. The only reason why I brought the names of Dalai Lama and Sister Wendy is because... Well, I, I know he's the icon of, of everything that's that's good and right and sometimes hopeless. No, but. the only thing I was going to say really that really caught my attention in the, in, in, in the movie it was one of the scientists mentioned that they, look, they went inside our head trying to look for the observer, meaning the spirit. They couldn't find it because it's invisible. So I thought it would be interesting to get the view of a spiritual leader such as Sister Wendy, or these people. But that's, see, you know what I'm saying? Because there are authorities also in-, in, in But you're the God, but you're the God within, and now Joe Friendly's talking about this solar mechanism, which is so intriguing right. to me, because I know everybody has that expression, I want my spot in the sun. Oh, so okay. if there's some way that a bigger tree doesn't maybe eclipse a littler one, and yet, I, I don't know. Oh, interesting. No, I, I just wanted, yeah, go ahead. If I wasn't at the microphone, I would have said this to you privately. Oh, no, no, I'm glad you yeah. did it publicly because Thank you. you're sharing this with people and they really yeah. need to hear what you What I'm proposing is that by actually getting into the, the increasing um, and decreasing levels of solar energy, you can develop uh, a psychology that talks um, more effectively to the traits. So we'll be able Iris just has something to say about how to save public access because without public access, none of these new ideas will ever be heard. And is that okay? Would you want to Go ahead. I, I agree with you very much about what you're saying, that there is something there, because I can feel it when I get close to the season of my birthday. I, I, I feel it um, without even, sometimes not even paying attention. Physically, there's, um, I feel a lift, and I feel um, excited, and it might, and I might not have even been paying a, a lot of attention to the month or the day because of the busyness of my life, but I, I totally feel that I suddenly go into like overdrive. Um, but I want to say that Don't you have a lot of valuable things, and a lot of people here, I've watched and listened to what you've said, and I appreciate that you're people of thought and intelligence and of discernment. And public access is so valuable because on regular TV, these voices aren't heard. And if they're heard at all, it's like between this advertisement, that advertisement, this zooming by, that zooming by. And the, I found, I know the key to holding on to public access. I've, I've spent entire day calling every person in the, in the um, Senate, calling every person in the House of Representatives. You have to call them personally, tell them the number of the bill, and tell them, this is what I say to them, we got public cable because the big companies didn't want to invest in it. They didn't want to put down the money. They, they like to use other people's money for pro but then they wanted this because it was a big opportunity to make a lot of money. And they promised us that we would have access stations so that there would be free speech television. And now they're trying to rescind it. And I ask people, do you think it's fair for us to pay for something? It's like going to a supermarket putting your groceries on, a, on, a, on the conveyor belt, giving the person the money, and walking out with an empty bag. And when I put it in those terms, they listen. And when you, when you call up, if you get the secretary or the aide on, and you make it personal, and you ask them and engage them, they want to write down this bill. They take it to the person, they take it to that congressman because he's inundated with emails, with letters, with people calling for all the anything, paper, and you have to make a personal statement to them. And most telephones right now, you can get long distance. We have to devote something to it so we don't lose the richness of, you, of what you have to say and a lot of others that have said. 
fat and hurt here. I want you to keep doing it. I want us to have the wonderful things that you can bring to us to make this a better, richer world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, let me add. Right now. You have to make a call. You have to reach them. Go to MNN. beginning well you know to me uh what the bleep was an enjoyable film uh it spoke to a need it certainly didn't provide any practical advice not even creating your day well you know creating your day is misleading uh go on because i don't think people appreciate what's being said and i think a lot of people walked out of it and not believing it essentially what he what they did demonstrate was they had a lot of talking heads in a story and in my opinion, that was a poor choice of how to present this information. It was very, very distracting. Essentially, what they demonstrated for the, sometimes uh, a, a, a movie, a metaphor, a story can be very, very uh, enlightening. But what really they did was is they demonstrated for the first time in a comprehensive way that quantum science actually is discovering and reaffirming knowledge that's been available for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. That for the first time, quantum scientists are saying, our thoughts create or directly impact everybody's experience. But not the first time, since the 1920s, when quantum mechanics showed that the, uh, the experimenter affected the experiment. Well, you see, what I'm saying is, is, is that this was the first time it was uh, in a form that was digestible to the masses. Right. You know, quantum focus, uh, or, 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 or rather quantum physics, when you talk about quantum physics, you're talking about a, a very uh, isolated subgroup of scientists. Mm -hmm. And most scientists shun them. Most scientists don't want to know what they're discovering. But you know why I think they don't want to know? Because if you can create your reality in yoga and in Ayurveda, Ayurveda is a whole system of herbs and how the herbs act. Uh, we have burned witches at the stake for knowing about herbs and how to heal people. And, you you know. see, I, I, think, I think one of the things that you misunderstand when you talk about this is, is that when you talk about various herbs, the world is filled with herbs that do the same thing. And in my opinion, the most powerful challenge is to recognize your own local medicines. Not look and say, oh, it's worked over there, so I will use it over here. Mm -hmm. There is this tremendous uh, movement of using these wonderful systems in an allopathic way. You also touched on that earlier in your interview. Mm -hmm. And when you use these things allopathically, you dilute them, you insult them. And, and, and so this idea of Ayurvedic providing, providing a universal answer in my opinion, what we have to do is discover the, the genius, the, the incredible, exciting wisdom in these things and find how do we adapt it to our local environments. So, you know, to me, if you say, this is the herb that fixes this, and this herb fixes that, you missed the whole point. But that's what Ayurveda says. Well, but it's talking not, to an environment. But they were talking, they, it was proposed in India, it was proposed in that period, in that environment, in that lifestyle. So what I think what you're referring to is we have similar situations here where we eat the vegetables that are grown in the season. For example, if it's squash season, we eat squash. If That's it's zucchini, I, mean. I didn't mean a specific. So herb locally, herb. apply these principles exactly. in your own way, like you know, fresh, cook freshly cooked right. food. You don't have to buy at fast food places, but you make your own food, or but not run to the Indian store and just buy the Ayurvedic. Oh um, yeah, no. Is, is no, that I, what you yes. mean? You know, it's, it's sort of your... you 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 see that in, no, in, in but... the application of a very beautiful system called homeopathy. Mm. If you were to spend time with classical homeopaths, they wouldn't recognize what we call homeopathy here. Mm -hmm. We have bastardized it, but people say, I use homeopathy. 
I go to a homeopath. And they haven't got the slightest idea of how foreign what they're doing is to this beautiful system of healing. The same thing is true of Ayurveda. Uh, Ayurveda just says all disease comes from mistake of the intellect. And I was hearing you before say you must take responsibility, but you don't you don't want this to be misunderstood by someone that they feel that they're uh, responsible for their sickness when they don't understand why. And if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that what the bleep do we know doesn't really explain why that works, how we create our reality. They're just it's it's been brought to the level of entertainment. Yeah, I think it has. Saying? Now, don't misunderstand. Yeah, I yeah. think they did something very important. Mm -hmm. And what speaks to me about it is the widespread excitement about it. Mm -hmm. I was part of the group that saw it the first night it opened in New York. Mm -hmm. There wasn't an empty seat. Mm -hmm. And it was in a couple of movie houses. And it was quite exciting to me that enough people by word of mouth, because it really wasn't widely advertised, mm -hmm. felt a yearning to see this information. Now, listening to people walk out at a movie, it was very obvious to me that a lot of people didn't get it. And there's a certain uh, commercialization of these things by the, the people in the movie that is occurring in a way where it's read my book, buy my product, do this, and that's not about enlightenment, nor is that about really grasping the awesome power of our minds and the responsibility for that awesome power. They need a sequel now to, ex to yeah, explain yeah. it, I think. To they need to more. really, and I don't think they understand the practical applications, especially concerning health and healing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really easy to talk about it in an academic way. And there are very few academics in my experience who have the slightest inkling of what spiritual practice is. But that's why Jesus was so known with the healing. That's very practical. What you're, what, whatever you're saying, because it's a lot of words for people, you're a smart guy, but if there are people out there that are getting a death sentence in one direction and then living, you know, two decades with your practice, that's a practical application. That's a miracle. One could look at it that way. Yeah. Uh, to me, it, 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 it's uh, an obvious outcome you know i don't see it as that remarkable that's that's one of the strange things i've noticed that you know we live in a world where people become heroes they become heroic for just doing basic human things